Well, good morning and, uh, and welcome. Um, I must say, because of the very bright lights, uh, I can't see you very well, but uh, anyway, it's wonderful to have all of you here. Uh, so welcome to the Vail Global Energy Forum 2016. Uh, we're absolutely delighted that you've cho chosen to join us for what is sure to be a fascinating and insightful exploration of the status of North American energy today and into the future. No one can escape but how turbulent these times are for the energy industry, how disruption is taking place throughout the entire energy system. No sector is immune from the technological, geopolitical, and financial ups and downs that are taking place today. Oil at below $30 a barrel, gasoline at less than $2 a gallon, natural gas at $2.50 a million BTU, photovoltaic panels at 50 cents a watt, the duck curve, self-driving cars, electric cars, no cars, Uber, distributed generation, rooftop solar, grid-scale energy storage, and the Paris Agreement on curbing global climate change. The pace of change in the energy system is probably greater today than it has been any time since the early 1900s. Only a year ago, last time we got together for the Vail Global Energy Forum, many of these realities would have seemed unlikely, if not impossible. Over the course of the next two days, we'll delve into the most crucial issues facing our energy system today and into the future. We'll begin with a discussion of public understanding of science, energy, and the environment. For many, electricity comes from a plug in the wall and gasoline comes from the pump down the block. The energy industry has done such a terrific job making energy easily and seamlessly available in our lives that we often take it for granted. As we consider the changes ahead, we need the public to understand and appreciate what's behind the light switch and beyond the gasoline pump. We need the public to appreciate the enormous scale of the energy system, the trillions of dollars invested in infrastructure, and the highly skilled and technologically sophisticated workforce that keeps the power and gasoline flowing. Most often, the only time we pay attention to energy is when the price of gasoline is too high, the power goes out, or when we have an oil spill. Today, as we grapple with the changing energy landscape, we need a well-informed and knowledgeable public as consumers, investors, and voters. So what is the future of energy, and what are the forces shaping it? We will learn from leading experts how will the North American energy situation be affected by slowing economic growth in China, an emerging India, and the geopolitical instability in the Middle East and Russia? And what are the prospects for renewable energy? And how quickly re will renewable energy expand? And which of the existing sources of energy will it displace? Will it be coal? Will it be natural gas, oil, or nuclear power? And moving to another topic, can the technological breakthroughs and decreasing prices for natural gas, renewables, energy storage, and even technologies like carbon dioxide capture and storage, can these help provide secure and affordable energy while at the same time significantly decreasing the greenhouse gas emissions that are causing climate change? We'll also hear about what it means to have shale oil at below $40 a barrel. We're now about five years into the shale oil revolution. This has brought lower prices, but at the same time, it has contributed to a global oil glut, which is testing the foundations of the global oil and gas industry. How low can the price of oil go, and how will this affect the quest for North American energy self-sufficiency? And what will be the consequences of lifting the ban on the export of U.S. crude oil? Will prices go up, down, or won't it make much difference? We're also now more than 10 years into the shale gas revolution, which has brought us low natural gas prices, century-long natural gas reserves, and has had a major impact on shutting down coal-fired power plants, 
and importantly, contributed significantly to reducing greenhouse gas emissions in the United States. So what comes next for the natural gas, gas industry? And what are the opportunities across the rest of the economy that are made possible by abundant and low-cost natural gas? Looking to the future, we must also begin to think about the interactions between energy and water. We need water for energy, and we need energy for water. In a world of growing demand and shrinking water resources, how do we begin the integrated resource planning that considers the interdependency of water and energy? One of the largely untold stories of the past 50 years is the slow but steady improvements in energy efficiency across the economy. Improving just over a little bit uh, more than 1% a year, today we would be using about twice as much energy but for these improvements. Today we will learn where and how these improvements have been made and the profoundly beneficial effects that energy efficiency has had on our energy system. And there's also great news about renewable energy. Solar panels are getting cheaper and now sell at about 50 cents per watt. At these prices, solar energy is competitive in retail markets in many regions. Wind turbines are more reliable and have higher capacity factors than ever before. And in the best places, wind power can be the low cost supplier of electricity. We will hear from the leaders of the renewable energy industry what's next and prospects for continued growth. But adding renewable energy to the electric grid isn't easy. Renewable energy is not controllable like natural gas and coal-fired power generations. Sometimes there's too much, sometimes there's too little. And as the fraction of renewable energy increases to over 20 to 30 percent, managing our operating, uh, operating our electric grid gets to be much more difficult. Managing it will require new flexibility in both electricity generation and electricity demand. We'll need much more real-time information about the status of the electric grid, and we'll need new markets for services that enable the electric grid of the 21st century. At the Precord Institute for Energy, we are launching a new initiative that will focus the strengths of the entire university on this important topic. Professor Arun Majumdar, the co-director of the Precord Institute, will lead a discussion about this important topic. So moving on, just months ago, governments from around the world came together in Paris to reach an historic agreement, agreement about how developed and developing nations would act together to reduce greenhouse gas emissions that cause climate change and learn how, in addition, to adapt to the new realities of a warmer world. Unlike the top-down strategies of the past, each country was asked to develop a plan of action, the so-called Independently Determined National Contributions, or INDCs. This new approach, while not sufficient to stabilize the temperature at internationally agreed upon levels, is a new start. And we will get the latest information from leaders who participated in those negotiations last month. Now finally, in, in a different domain, the transportation sector is undergoing transformational changes. Electric cars, autonomous cars, no cars, Uber. Consumer preferences are changing. We'll hear from leaders at the bleeding edge of innovation and they'll paint a picture of what may come and that in fact this may come faster than we expect. So I would like to end by thanking Jay Precourt the visionary who believed five years ago that a forum of this kind would be beneficial. Industry, government, academia, coming together to gain a deeper understanding of the energy systems and the forces that are shaping it. He had a vision for how North America could work together to ensure that our energy systems are secure, affordable, and environmentally sustainable. We are pleased to have our Canadian and Mexican neighbors here with us today working together to find opportunities for cooperation and knowledge sharing as we all grapple with the changes that are taking place today 
and those to come. Energy is the lifeblood of modern civilization. We cannot afford to lose sight of the critical role that energy plays in driving our economies, making our lives comfortable, putting food on our tables, and even keeping us entertained. This forum brings together people with many perspectives on the energy system. The upstream oil and gas industry, electric utilities, the renewables industry, the automobile industry, government officials, nonprofit organizations, academics, students, interested citizens, and more. At this fifth Vail Global Energy Forum, we come together to make sure that we keep our eye on the ball, keeping our energy system strong and affordable, while at the same time dealing with the very real threats posed by climate change. Thank you for joining us, and welcome to the Vail Global Energy Forum 2016.